More of you, Daddy. Yes. None of me, Father. Yes. Lord Almighty, open our ear, O oh Lord. Yes. Father, open our eyes, O oh Lord. Yes. Holy Spirit, speak to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yes. Speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, speak to all that challenges in our life. All that reproach in our life, O oh Lord. Father, we will see you before we leave here, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, set the country free, O oh Lord. Yes. Lose what needs to be good in our life, O Lord. Burn what needs to be burned in our life, O Lord. Let it come down with your mighty power, O Lord. Perform miracles, O Lord. Perform wonder, O Lord. Let there be testimony. And let your name, O Lord, be glorified. Father, we say thank you, Daddy. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. You don't know me all before. We thank you because you are going to perform wonder. You are going to perform miracles. Also a mighty, a 
a mighty man in Bible. But that is the reproach I want us to look at. You. But there's something in his life. There's death in his life. There's reproach in his life. There's stagnation in that life. Affliction is sitting down there. Obstacle is on that way. That challenging him. The reproach of make us realize that this man, he says he's a captain of the host of the Savior. You know, he, he described him as a great man. You know, he was great to the extent that that reproach in his life, he cannot take it off. He has fought a lot of battles for Syria. He has won a lot of battles for Syria. But that problem, that stagnation, that thing that is really good him, with all the battle he has fought and won, he cannot remove it. Though. That problem will remain there. And he said, but he was a left part. <sighs> a great man. The one that swimming in money, he has power, he has everything, he has what it takes yes. for a man to have. Mm. But that reproach spoiled everything, that made everything, you know, that the God called him, you know, God called him, you know, God even testified to it. You know, this man, you know, he fights, he won the battle, he fights for it, everybody loves him. But this reproach, I've already made them in. That means everything. You know, the title that this man has. The reproach, the affliction, the obstacle. It's like carrying it around. Thank God. We are not going into that uh, all the facts today because that's what other examples we want to look into. Thank God for the servant of our wife that knew Elisha. That actually had to go to her master. That's mine. You have seen the ridicule. She's one of the slaves that's being brought from Samaria and said, ah, I know there's one man. Yes. If this man, if my master can go. You know, Syria and Samaria, they are always fighting. Now, what will we want to go and do if it is not because of the affliction in Samaria? But well, you have no choice, you have to go. Thank God for this yes. servant girl. Yes. You know, in fast 14. Yes, Fast 14, sir. Then went he down and did himself seven times into Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the, you know, flesh of a of little child. Because when he went to Elisha, Elisha did not even go to him. Elisha did not say, just go and dip yourself into that river. Yes. Just go. Obedience. Very paramount. The thing that has been labeled in him, that has been really put in him, that people have been asking, you can fight, but you can deliver, you can't even deliver yourself from this shame and this push. You know? And he said, let's go. Even he's already, you are giving him. No, 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 I'm not going. Yes. Ah, thank God for the Savior. And he said to me, go and do it. He didn't tell you bring money or anything. Oh, what he just told you? Just go and dip yourself. And he went. He dipped himself several times. And the scripture that Fatih told us, you know, he said that his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. And fast 15, and he returned to the man of God. Ah, ah. And all his company, not only him, those who that went with him, you know he's a man of failure. You know he had all the shoulder and the army and everything that he said. Even when he's going to Samaria, he took the silver stone and everything in order to present the man of God. You know, so now he went back. When he actually see the way, your enemy will testify Amen. that you know there's God in your life. That truly you are serving the Lord Almighty. That truly you are serving the Hell Shadow. You know, every area that should be ridiculed, every reproach is in your life. Where they have been asking, where is your God? If you believe this afternoon, ah, that Hell Shadow, the Almighty God. We come and triumphantly over that situation in the mighty name of Jesus. You know the one that actually healed this man. You think it's Elisha that 
testify. Look at that 15, uh, verse 15. And you return to the man of God. He and his company and, and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the hearts but in his strength. Now therefore, I praise him. Bless. Hallelujah. So now, if he can testify, you can imagine. Every woman, all the company that works with him, they testify that it's truly, it's truly the God in this land. We must already take all the Samaria and captive, but there's true God in Israel. God, there's God in Israel. You know, your enemy have been saying, they've been stolen all the good things in you. They've been reproaching you, they've been ridiculing you. Your enemy have been ridiculing you. And I prophesy to your life this afternoon that God Almighty will prove himself for that over that situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. The second person I want us to look at. If we turn our Bible to the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, we need just 9 and 10. Look at that man. He should walk on belying me. Ah, we always say this. This should go. On. This reproaches. Look at Jabez. Yes. I can go have a child. I'm calling her because I dare him in a sorrowful way. You know, and now you call him sorrowful child. And that's that nation. That reproach has been followed Jabez all the days of his life. Until when he think, until when he can reflect, ah, how can my life be like this? You know? Ah, ah. And in that situation, in that first night, he said, and Chadis was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Chadis, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Uh -uh. Until when his brain open, until when he see himself, that how can I be, how can all my friends, uh -uh. they call them uh, priests, they call them peace. They call them beautiful. But when it is done, they call him sorrow. Who wants to play with sorrow? Everybody will be running away from him. So now, on that day, first, first, that faithful day, and he fasted, and did that is called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, thou bless me indeed. And like my cause, that time I might be with me, and thou will keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And you know what? And that and in that first step, and God granted him that which he request. If you believe this afternoon, if you believe this afternoon, if you trust in hell shatter, don't trust the one that's standing in front of you and the sinner like you. But trust in the king of kings, the one that called us. You know, the one that we will give account to at the end. You know, and he said, God granted him which he request. God will grant all your heart's desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every sorrow of your heart. We so actually come to the house of God with heavy heart. You know, with countenance sad. But I pray, I prophesy to somebody this afternoon that you will go be granted all your heart's desire Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Over that sorrow, over that reproach, over that tribulation. Over that stagnation, over that affliction, over that trial you are going through, over that challenges. <laughs> God will grant your heart's desire. I mean, I will grant all your I have asked desire in Jesus' mighty name. He has done it once, so. And he will do it again. He has granted this man, Jabez. He knew that I, I, I cannot continue to bear sorrow. You know, my name must be changed. And the scripture makes us realize that the one that caused sorrow, God even made him, made him more honorable than his brethren. Than those people that do not even cause sorrow. And I pray this afternoon that God will turn on your sorrow to testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. If you look at the book of Samuel, if you turn to the book of Samuel chapter 1, we know the story of uh, Anna very well. If you look at it from Psalm 1, I'm not going to jump because of our time. You 
know, in this land, there is a man called a, a, only now there was a certain man of Ramatai Soba of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elikana. And this man what? He had two wives. Anna is the first wife. Belina had a child. But Hannah did not have a child. God shut her womb. womb because God knew we be bearing something. But people are reproaching, they are making reproach of that. Why God is preparing good thing? Why God has a good plan? He said the thought I have for you is for good and not of evil. Okay. Ah! God has the plan of God. Of, of. He knew the one that wants to create through that womb. He's preparing that womb, but people are mocking. You know, even my right is saying, hmm, look at her. And she will, she will, she wants to boss, you know, we have a very when we want to brag like that. And she will say, Oh, me too. Oh, Maria. Why? What? Maybe when it's the time I say, go and get me water. Yeah. And that is where I want to say, I keep right behind her. And she, this woman, she was provoked. You know, in verse 6, he said, I, I advise you also provoke her soul to make her afraid, that is to make her angry. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Because the Lord has shut up her womb. If Abelina knew on that day that the death is about to come, you will not mock her, you know? If he knew that you were not dead, you will not see death. If he knew that the King of Kings, the Lord of God, is preparing something special, the one that will save Israel, the deliverer of Israel, will come from that. He will not, he, she will not make jest of her, you know? In verse 7, and she was provoked to the extent that she was crying, and not able to eat. Remember, even when the Elikana will give Perina and their children and everything, he will give this woman double portion. And he's thinking, am I not better than this one? Is it, is it better? No. No! In one interview, you have to see one interview. This is my home. Is it better that this is our home? No, be so. Yes. See? So this woman, she was crying. Thank God. And she knew that, ah, ah, it is time for me. No, I've been coming to Shiloh. Yes. I cannot just be going. Yes. I'm going back. You know, without making it pass, that Lord, enough is enough now. You need to do it. And he passed 11. And he said, and she vowed and vowed and said, Oh Lord of hosts, if thou we did look unto the affliction of your handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but we give unto thy handmaid a male child. God remember me. And God remember our Moses. He found grace. Our countenance, he said, our countenance was not sad anymore. Okay. You know, that sadness disappeared. In fact, uh, 18, he said, and she said, let their handmaid find grace in that side. Okay. So the woman went away. And did and it, and countenance was no more sad because she knew her prayer will be answered. Your prayer will be answered this morning. Yeah. This afternoon, you are not here by mistake. Because you have been ordained to be here, your prayer will be answered. Yeah. You, know, you know, he said, Anna found grace. Uh -huh. And God remembered her and gave her a male child. God will remember somebody this afternoon. Your head, your own case might not be a child. You know, it can be anything, whatever. Your need, ah, God that knows our need more than us. He will provide your home for you. He will remember you. If it's truly that you remember Hannah, if it's truly that Hannah found grace, you know, you will find grace this afternoon. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever you are reproaching, whatever that the enemy is afflicting you of, whatever you being ridiculed, I prophesy this your life this afternoon that you will find grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Go back the way you came. Amen. You know, this woman found grace, so, and God remember. Ah, if you look at the book of Luke, we have Luke chapter 13, first 10 to 13. You know, this uh, the healing of a woman with 18 with 18 years of immorality. 18 good years. Enemy are going to sit down her. Say, ah, ah, you. You can imagine for somebody, you just do like this one. 
for two hours and see how painful that would be. Talk to us for 18 years. 18 good years. The vanity are crippled. She, you know, she just said she was crippled and bent, and that is how it's, she was bending. The situation of her in the street, and people are just reading, oh, you know, people, we don't know her name, but we know that bent woman. Is that not what the Bible calls her? Yes. You know? So, but, you know, you receive her miracle. So, if you look at that 13, and uh, that's Luke 13, 10 to 13, you know, this woman was crippled by a spirit, you know, it's one spirit that make her cripple. Put her in one place and could not straighten up at all. But when Jesus saw her, when Jesus saw her crippleness, when Jesus saw her the way he was burned dead, and he lose her, and he set her free. Any problem, any tribulation, any affliction that cripple you, that bends you this afternoon, you shall be free in Jesus' mighty name. You see that the Father has set free. He said he is free indeed. You are free from the affliction. You are free from affliction. In the mighty name of Jesus. No more infirmity will disappear. You know, this woman's life was stagnant for 18 good years. Whatever that making your life stagnant. Cripple your life, you know, or your children. Any form of infirmity, any affliction, any reproaches in your life. That same Jesus that set that woman free uh-uh, will heal you this afternoon and set you free. And your life will not remain the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of Mark chapter 5, uh-uh, we know that story properly. But we don't know that woman's name. Yeah? Is anybody know her name? Nobody know her name. A certain woman, issue of blood. A lady with issue of blood. Ah, she has suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had. She has been blue and battered. Devil has been beating her to ashes. Everything that she had. You know, devil has taken it away. You know, and then, except for her situation, for that challenge, for that reproach to leave her, you know, it is getting worse. You know that also when she made her mind, make up her mind that if I can only touch, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That if she can only touch, ordinary yes. touch. Are you looking at the half and the omega? Like, I know. Are you looking at the cross? You are looking at the half and the omega, the beginning and the end, the the creator of all universe, the I am that I am, the El Shaddai. Oh, Jehovah. Jesus! Yeah. Oh, grace, 
anything. Whatever you take reproach in your life today shall become plain. We cancel it by the power and the blood of Jesus. Brethren, you are the only one that knows that reproach. I don't know it. But you know it. I know my reproach. That challenging, you know, that thing that challenging me. That has me, where is my God? Reproach that has me, where is your God? Every or oh, every reproach of stagnation, of poverty, ah, ah, reproach of diseases, of unfruitfulness, joblessness. Is it marital delay? The one that causes you the sadness of heart? Is it barrenness your heart? Is it problem in your marriage? Is it problem over your children? Is it reproach of bondage? Ah, ah, anything that limits you is a reproach and shall become plain. In the mighty name of Jesus. That reproach must live on. Uh, uh, so we are going to, I want us to start reflecting right now. You know, continue to pray right now. Beloved, reproach must destroy today. It must destroy today. It will destroy your life. If it is true God, uh, uh, that destroy reproach in Nehemiah's life, only the leprosy yoke was broken. Oh, yeah. And his flesh become like a little child. Uh -uh. What of Jabez? <laughs> only the sorrowful child was, no, was now more honorable <laughs> than his brethren. Hallelujah. And the word of Anna, God remember Anna. And give her somewhere. He remember her. He had the he didn't have compassion on her. He said, her countenance was not sad anymore. He said, a woman of visual of blood. All the 18 years of infirmity. The one that the sins have been, you know, put in a permanent position. Uh -uh. And eventually they received their total healing. The permanent one. Just, not just ordinary healing. You two, you are breaking loose right now. From that reproach, you are breaking loose. From that reproach, you are breaking loose. They must give way in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, no condition is permanent. Right? No condition is permanent. But remember, Anna has been going to Shiro. She has been praying. Uh -uh. She has been praying. But that day, she received a miracle. God remember her. And now then, Neman, he has been going up and down. You know, he has been really good. When he won the victory, they will say, that leprosy man. That's how they are going to describe him. What is the word that they are describing you of? Let me on our feet right now this afternoon. So we are going to pray that Father, every affliction that brought you close to my life must be destroyed. He must be destroyed. This afternoon begins to pray that every affliction that brought reproach to my life destroyed by the power and the blood of Jesus. Begin to pray right now. You know that affliction. You know that problem. You know that stagnation. You know that challenges. You know that passion. Here is your God.
chapter 13, verse 25 and 28. Only but why they slept, his enemy came and stood here. And 28, and he said, Ah, the enemy has gone. Mama. What are the work of the enemy in your life? In the life of your children? In your family? What are the work of the enemy? Only one. Destroy the work of the enemy. The young must be present today. In the name of Jesus. Father, destroy the work of the enemy. In my name. In my household. Oh, Heavenly Father. Destroy, 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 destroy. The work of the enemy. Father, we thank you. We give you appreciate the Lord Almighty. Because you already answered your prayer. You have already removed your reproach. You have already set you free from that confusion. You are in total of our need. Daddy, you are too